in Korea. And you know what? The whole month of June, we're going to be doing 10 revivals from Chicago to Los Angeles, from Chicago to LA. The whole month of June, we're going to be doing 10 revivals, preaching of the gospel, miracle signs, wonders, healing of the sick, dead raising, the whole month of June. So if you want to be a part of that, join us. That's going to be uh, from Chicago to St. Louis, to Kansas City, to Tulsa, to Amarillo, to Flagstaff, to Los Angeles. And we got a number of exciting things for this year's Route 66 revival. So don't miss that. If you are in the Bible Belt, if you are in Route 66 Highway, in Tulsa, Kansas City, Amarillo, Flagstaff, LA, Chicago, St. Louis. Come and join us. Be a part of the movement. Miracles, signs, and wonders. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good to see you, Tyler from Oregon. I want you to lift up your hands. Lord, I thank you for the power of God. Thank you to every single one of your children. You are not lost. You are not lost. And you are not far from the grace of God. His hands, his arms is not too short to save. And Lord, I declare salvation. I declare relief, deliverance, help. I declare help is on the way. And Lord, I thank you for supernatural power, breakthrough, victory, and visitation in the name of Jesus. If you receive it, I want you to say amen. And why don't you give the Lord a mighty shout? Hallelujah. Rabba Sata. So once again, friends, I want to welcome you. Amen. I want to welcome you. God bless you. I'm here in Grand Junction, Colorado. And I love what the Lord's been doing here. Amen. I love what the Lord's been doing here. So today is 420. And of course, 420 is a very worldly day where people, you know, like to you know, uh, get high and have substance abuse. But today on 420, we're going to believe for the power and the fire of God to come upon this region and this state in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to be ministering at Grand Junction, but last week in Salem, Oregon, my goodness, my, 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 Salem, Oregon, with this Marshallese people, the Marshall Islanders, the glory of God fell. It was so powerful. So much deliverance, mass deliverance, honestly. And uh, the Lord moved so powerfully in Salem, Oregon with the Marshallese people. So I really believe we're in a season of mass deliverance, great deliverance, extreme deliverance. It's our lifestyle. It's the bread of God's children. So praise God for what he did. And I'm excited for this weekend. Amen. So keep me and keep us in prayers. Because like I said, I have five services in the next three days. Amen. So God is good. Glory to God. And I just want to prophesy that God is bringing everything together. There are things that God is uniquely stitching as a tapestry of the goodness and the glory of God. God is stitching together everything that you need. And things are coming together and it's being aligned. So I want to encourage you that this is a season of new assignments, new alignments. This is a season where God is beginning to open up new doors, new appointments, new connections for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Have you ever ministered in Maryland? I have. I've ministered in, uh, in Virginia, actually. So DMV area multiple times. Amen. But Pennsylvania has become my East Coast hub. Hana. All right. So today I want to talk about shouts of victory. Are you ready to shout out loud for victory? In fact, I could hear the roar of heaven behind me. I can hear the roar of the Lion of Judah, of the God of justice. God is not happy about a certain th amount of things. He's not happy about the evil, the wickedness, manipulation, the injustice, the religiosity. And the Lord is about to release a shout of victory. Now, let me ask you, do you feel like you've been muzzled? Do you feel like a spirit of witchcraft has knocked the living breath out of your stomach, out of your gut? 
Do you feel like the enemy's been trying to stifle and, and stiffen uh, your voice? And uh, your vocal cords and your song and your sound and your preaching and your prayer. Do you feel like the spirit of Python and Jezebel, the spirit of witchcraft has been trying to intimidate you, bully you, push you into a corner and try to trap you and try to snuff out the grace and the glory of God? Well, let me tell you, this is a season where God is about to shout out loud for victory. This is a season where the lion of the tribe of Judah is about to roar out loud on your behalf. If you're with me today, I want you to say amen. Because God is about to shout and roar on your behalf. God is about to speak up for those who cannot speak. The Lord is going to shout through you because you are his trumpet. Because you are his shofar. God is going to shout through you because you are his instrument. So there is a fresh wave and a fresh move. Everybody say hello to the woman of God, Dr. Jolyn Whitaker. Good to see you, woman of God. I think of you and pray for you often, my friend. We love you and honor you. Woman of God prophetess, Dr. Jolyn Whitaker. I think of you and pray for you often. And I know there's some things, Dr. Jolyn, you and I were going to do in the next season again. Amen. Well, the enemy is about to loosen your vocal cords. God is about to loosen the anointing from your mouth, from your belly. God's about to release shouts of victory and shouts of praise. In fact, the Bible says the tribe of Judah will go first. And we know Judah is the tribe of the lion or the kingly anointing. We also know that Judah means the people of praise. So the tribe of Judah is a tribe of God's people that praise him, the high praises. Who here knows that there's levels of warfare that are broken according to the high praises of God? What does that mean? The higher the frequency of your praise, the higher the levels of witchcraft and warfare will be broken and obstructed off of your life. I'm gonna repeat that again. The higher the level of the frequency of your, of your praise, the higher the level of warfare and destruction will be obstructed and destroyed in Jesus' mighty name. So there's a high praise anointing. Someone say high praise. There's a high praise anointing. And once again, today on 420, we declare there ain't no high like the most high because Yeshua HaMashiach, he is El Elyon, the Lord God most high, amen? But who here knows that this is a season where walls are falling. I want to declare that over you. Every wall is about to fall. Every Jericho wall will come crumbling down in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, what does a wall stand for? A wall stands for resistance. A wall stands for a set up against you. The enemy has tried to set up walls of resistance, barriers and barricades of resistance and opposition against you. But we are in a season where walls are crumbling down. Walls are breaking down. We are in a season where God is going to turn the high and the lofty, the haughty and the proud. God is going to bring low every high thing. So we are in a season of exposure. We are in a season where God is going to turn the attacks and the demonstrations of evil and wickedness of the Haman spirit. It's going to fall back on their very own heads. If you're with me today, I want you to say amen. I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost and give us some hearts and likes because I feel the power of God. We're in a season where walls are falling down. And let me ask you, have you been experiencing walls of opposition, walls that are of resistance, walls that are trying to test you and contest you? It feels like you're hitting a wall. It feels like you're, you're hitting resistance over and over and over again. God, I need a breakthrough. God, I need fresh fire. God, I need provision. Jesus, we need you to provide. We need you to show up, show up. But have you been experiencing these walls of Jericho?
Well, I want to prophesy over you. Every wall of Jericho is going to come crumbling down. Come on, somebody. I need you to give God some praise. Every wall of Jericho that is intentionally, maliciously set up against you and your life will come crumbling down. Who are you, O mountain? Who are you, O gods and kings of the nations? The Lord sits in the heavens and he laughs. Who are you, O mountain? Grace, grace to the mountain. Be moved, be removed. Who are you? God laughs at his enemies. And every high and lofty king, every high and lofty minister, every high and lofty principality, the Lord laughs in Jesus' name. I want you to say, ha, ha, ha. I want you to say, he, he, he. Because the Lord is laughing in the mighty name of Jesus. But we are in a season right now where every wall is going to come crumbling down. And what do walls stand for? Once again, it stands for resistance. It stands for opposition. And walls stand for delay. So God is about to break the wall of resistance, opposition, and delay against you in Jesus' name. Now, people of God, in the Jewish timeline, in the timeline of God, in <clears throat> the calendar of heaven, yesterday was a very special day. And I'm going to tell you why it still relates to today. Because the same grace from yesterday is overflowing today on 420. Amen. The same grace. So the same grace is over us in this umbrella season, over the season. And yesterday, some very important happened in Jewish history. What happened yesterday? What happened yesterday? The walls of Jericho crumbled down. In fact, the Bible says, Joshua 620. The Bible says in Joshua 620, amen, that the walls fell down flat. I want you to say that. The walls fell down flat. The walls became flat, leveled before the Israelites. So yesterday, it was the historical day of the Jericho walls falling down. And I believe that the same grace, the same anointing of walls falling down is over us right now. <clears throat> so let me give you some facts about the Jericho walls. Amen. Number one, Jericho was one of the greatest labyrinth strongholds in that whole region of that time. The greatest stronghold of that time. The walls of Jericho were 12 feet high and five feet wide. Now, probably in our day today, that doesn't seem too big or, or, or too tall, but 12 feet high and five feet wide. I want you to imagine that. We also understand that the walls of Jericho, that people lived in the walls of Jericho. How do you know that? The story of Rahab, the prostitute, who actually allowed the people of God to go in. Rahab was a spy. And we understand that Rahab lived in the walls of Jericho. Okay, I want you to imagine that. The walls were tall and thick enough. The height and the width was so large that people and families would live in the walls. Rahab and her family lived in the wall. Actually, we don't know if she had her own children, but we do know that eventually, uh, you know, she did. She's in the line, the lineage of Jesus, the Messiah. Amen. So, of course, she has a family. So, we understand that Rahab family, that families lived in that wall of Jericho. Amen. So 12 feet high, five feet wide, and families lived in the walls. So this stronghold is not just a stronghold, but it's a place where people are entrapped. It's a place where people are ensnared. Their identity, their family, their destiny, they're living within the walls. They live there a part of the walls. Amen. But you see this power, this energy, this principality, these walls fell down. Now, I want you to hear me, friends, because I believe right now the Lord's going to minister to you. I want to give you prophetic strategy. I want to give you scriptural, biblical strategy about what you're experiencing and what's going on right now. If you're with me today, say amen. Are you ready for shouts of victory. Are you ready to shout out loud for vindication and for vengeance? Are you ready for the Lord to shout out loud for great victory? And 
It's by your shout that the walls will fall. Hear me now. It's by your sound, your frequency, that the walls are going to fall. The greater the walls, the greater the shout. I'm going to say that again. The greater the walls of opposition, the greater the shout of vindication. Are you ready for your shout to be released? Your sound. You're tired of being shut down. You're tired of being shut up. You're tired of being quiet and silent. You're tired of the enemy mocking you, taunting you, haunting you, making fun of you, taking advantage of you, violating you, violating your boundaries and your space. You're tired of the enemy playing you like a rag doll. But God is about to release a shout. And every wall and barrier will come crumbling down at once. Somebody say at once. At once. They will all come crumbling and falling down and become nothing. Leveled, become flat in Jesus' name. If you're ready to receive the word of the Lord today, I want you to say, amen. Let's go to the word of God here, amen. Let's go to the word of God. Hallelujah. Let's go over to Joshua chapter six. <clears throat> We're gonna go over to Joshua chapter six. Glory to God and continue to give some hearts and likes and comment below where you were watching from. Joshua six, verse one. Now Jericho was shut, tightly shut because the Israelites. Isn't that interesting? Jericho became even more fortified because the Israelites. Because it's you, the enemy is tightening things up. I'm going to repeat that again. Because it's you, the enemy is working harder day and night. Because it's you, the enemy is working overtime to try to stop your move. Because it's the Israelites, they tightened up the walls of Jericho even more because it's you. Some would say, because it's me. No one went out and no one came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, behold, I've delivered Jericho into your hand. You better praise the Lord. I have delivered Jericho, the strongest stronghold, the most fortified a uh, wall, the most difficult opposition. I have given it into your hand, saith the Lord. If you receive it, say amen. I want you to stretch out your hands because it's being delivered straight into your bosom. I have delivered it into your hand along with its king and its mighty men of valor. Verse three, march around the city with all the men of war, circling the city one time. Someone say one time. Do this for six days. Come on, somebody. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry seven ram's horns in front of the ark. In front of the ark. Prophetic strategy, friends. I'm trying to give you prophetic strategy right now. Follow me here. This is the word of the Lord. In front of the ark. My goodness. Shut up, ba ba And do this for six days. Then on the seventh day, say seventh day. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times while the priests blow the horns. And when there is a long blast of the ram's horn and you hear it sound, have all the people give a mighty shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and all your people will charge straight or advance into the city. So Joshua, son of Nun, summoned the priests and said, take up the ark of the covenant. Have seven priests carry seven rams or in front of the ark of the Lord. Come on, somebody say, preach, Dr. Ben. Somebody say, preach, man of God. Listen, friends, this is prophetic strategy. Some of you feel like you've been silenced. Silence is not always a bad thing. Silence is not always a bad thing. In fact, you know, silence is a strategy of war. It's part of the art of war. You want to do a Jehovah sneaky. You want to do a sneak attack on your enemies. Sometimes you don't want to announce or pronounce of your coming. You want to do things hidden in the glory of God. And in due time, at the right time, it will be revealed and it will be a surprise and a shock and a sneak attack in Jesus name. I want you to say Jehovah sneaky. But you see in this passage, the Lord begins to instruct the Israelites, his people. He says, be silent for six days. Once again, silence does not equate weakness. Just because you've been quiet 
it doesn't mean you're a loser. Just because you're not speaking doesn't mean you're not wanted. Just because you're not preaching, you're not talking, because you're not an extrovert, an alpha male, an alpha type of person, you're not dominating a conversation, it doesn't mean that you are worthless or you are weak. Sometimes silence is true strength. Can I repeat that again? Silence is true strength. And let me tell you, in due time, the roar of the lion of the tribe of Judah is going to be released. Remember, you see the story of Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus was brought to the slaughter like a lamb to the shears. But he did not even open his mouth. Open his mouth, what does that mean? Jesus did not defend himself. He did not cry out in pain. He did not curse the people. He did not call out angels of fire from heaven to judge all of those who were trying to kill and crucify him. He did not defend himself, but it was the father that would vindicate. And in fact, when Jesus died on the cross, there was an earthquake. So even the heavens and the earth answered in favor of Jesus. They answered uh, uh, for, for the Lord. They answered for God. So here's Jesus. Like a lamb. Who your knows? If you want to be like a lion, you must first be like a lamb. In order to move in the strength, the power, the anointing of a king, of the lion, you must first move in the meekness of the suffering servant of the lamb of God. Remember, it's the lamb that's seated on the throne, not the lion. It's the lamb that's perpetuated. It's the nature of God. It's the nature of Jesus, Yeshua, the, the Passover lamb, the lamb of God that was sacrificed before the creation of the world, before the foundation of the world. It's the nature, that facet of Jesus that destroyed death. It's the lamb of God. So meekness is not weakness. I'm going to say that again. Meekness is not weakness. And here in this passage, the Lord gives prophetic instruction. Listen, friends, I want to give you some instruction and I want to give you some prophetic strategy here. Some of you are facing some Jericho walls. Are you facing some resistance? Are you experiencing some opposition? Heavy witchcraft, heavy warfare. Let me tell you, I was experiencing some warfare and, and you know, things, you know, in the last week. But it's broken in Jesus' name. Bang, bang, bang. Hallelujah. After coming back from Hawaii, I was going through a weird spiritual, emotional funk. And you know, I'm human. You know, it tends to happen. And the Lord had to meet me and the Lord had to fill me and refresh me. And he had to put me back in the right perspective. Amen. But you see, many of you are facing walls, giants. You're facing walls of Jericho. And you think moving in your gift or doing what you're good at or doing what you always do is going to cause the walls to fall. No, my friends, you must be led by the spirit. If you are facing an enemy, you will have the battle. You will have victory by moving in the spirit. I'm telling you, Jesus has greater intelligence. Okay, it's not AI, artificial intelligence. It's AI apostolic intelligence. There is a higher realm of intelligence, the IQ, the SQ, the spiritual quota of heaven. There is a higher realm called the mind of Christ. And God is giving you Christ intelligence. He's giving you Christ-like thinking. Somebody say, amen. Somebody say, I have the mind of Christ. So you see that if you're facing a wall, we cannot defeat it by our own strength and gifts. We must be led by the Spirit of God. It takes God to gain God's victory. I'm gonna say that again. It takes God to gain God's victory. So here we see the Israelites are facing one of the greatest kingdoms. It's in the way between them and the promised land. Come on, somebody. Whatever's in your way will come crumbling down in Jesus' mighty name. Rebe rabo satanamrande. But here they are, they're facing these walls, these infamous walls that are worldwide, uh, worldly known, renowned, recognized for its strength, for its labyrinth, for its stronghold. And God had a prophetic word. Here's the word, my friends. If you are facing a wall, if you are experiencing resistance and opposition, 
I want you to hear me and say, you're talking to me. Here's a prophetic word. The Lord says, for six days, march around. Come on, somebody, march around in silence. Have seven priests carry seven ram's horns in front of the ark. And then on the seventh day, Jesus, walk around seven times and release a long blast and all the people in unity will release the shouts and the roar of the Lord. Suddenly, victory praise comes. Suddenly, the shout of victory and vengeance and vindication comes. Suddenly, the whole company, the whole people, everybody looked like they're crazy. What are they doing? They're doing a silent retreat. What are they doing? They're having a silent fast. They're not talking. They're not saying a word. What are they doing? They're just walking around the park. And all of a sudden, suddenly, boom, 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 seven priests, seven ram's horn on the seventh day, walk around seven times. That's quadruple completion. And that day where the shout was released and the walls fell down and fell flat, that day was yesterday. And we are still in the overflow of that grace of every Jericho wall falling down in the mighty name of Jesus. If you're with me today, someone say amen. Every wall of resistance, opposition, is gonna come crumbling down. And listen, some of you, you're speaking too much. You're doing too much. God is a simple God. As mysterious, majestic, and intricately, elaborately, eloquently awesome our, our Lord is. He's also very simple. He's so simple that children understand him. He's so, he's so majestically, mysteriously awesome that even children understand who the Lord is. Thank you so much, Dr. Jolin. God bless you, woman of God. She's still, look at that, she's so humble. She's still on my broadcast today, praise God. And you see, he's so simple. And sometimes simplicity is all you need. And all you need is these simple instructions. Be quiet until the Lord releases you to speak. Some of you are in stupid warfare or you have committed, omitted warfare against yourself because you're trying to defend yourself because you're too busy talking. You're too busy talking. You're too busy owning the room. You're too busy being proud and nonchalant. And like the Bible says on the book of Proverbs, uh, like a golden ring in the snout and the nose of a pig, it's useless. So too many of us are acting unclean and we're acting defiled. When we need to simplify what the Lord's saying and he's saying, be quiet. You're doing too much. You're striving in the flesh. You're shaking. You're, you're in the middle of the night. Come on, who am I talking to? Listen, many of you, you have had difficulty sleeping. Many of you, you've been getting attacked in your sleep. It's been difficult for you to sleep. In fact, uh, this morning I woke up with an incredible dream, praise God. But many of you, you've been experiencing difficulty sleeping in the night hour. It's because there's a shift in the seasons, supernaturally and spiritually, and you understand, you discern that something is off, something is, is getting back into alignment. So many of you have been having difficulty sleeping. If I'm talking to you, I want you to say amen and give us some hearts and lights because I declare right now, God is giving you rest. God is giving you peace and shalom. And the spirit of God is about to blanket you and clothe you with the parakletos, with the comforter, with the Ruach Kodesh. If you believe it, say amen. So God is about to break off that insomnia and that waywardness and that worriness. He's going to break off that double-mindedness and God's going to give you single mind, sound mind, and simplicity of heart. If you're with me today, say amen. But you see, yesterday was the day, historically, in Jewish biblical calendar, where the Jericho walls came crumbling down. Are you ready to praise the Lord? 
Are you ready to praise God? Are you ready to shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph? Are you ready to release trumpet sounds, trumpet blasts? Remember the shofars, that stand for victory. It stands for the shofar of the Lord that pronounces, announces of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you ready for breakthroughs, for blasts of breakthroughs? Are you ready to shout unto God to, uh, to, Parade in the glory of God to jump around. Are you ready for the ecstatic bliss, that enjoyment of God? Because he did it and he's about to do it and he will do it. And he is all that he says he is. If you're with me today, say amen. There's going to be such a shout that's going to come out of your belly. Imagine like a baby is in your body. A baby's been in your womb for the last nine months. And it's time for this baby to come forth. And now the baby's beginning to crown. You see the crown? You see that? Oh, it's crowning, it's crowning. And suddenly, yeah, yeah, the baby's cry is now released. Some of you are prematurely crying. Some of you are prematurely speaking and moving. Some of you are prematurely trying to do things in the flesh. My friends, I'm telling you, you don't need to talk. You don't need to do a thing. The Bible says, be still and you will see the victory of the Lord. Be still and you will see the hand of God show up on, on your behalf before you be still. All you have to do is be still, be silent, be quiet, be you. All you have to do is be still and worship the Lord. Lift up your hands and surrender and watch what God will do in the mighty name of Jesus. If you're with me today, I want you to say amen. On the seventh day, for seven times, they circled the encampment and they released a long blast and a unified shout, a unified sound of victory. If you're ready for victory, say amen. If you are ready for vindication and for vengeance, I need you to go bunk wild and I need you to praise the name of Jesus for the next 10 seconds, wherever you're watching from, whether you're in your car, whether you're in your home, you're in the bathroom, I need you to go bunk wild and praise the Lord with some high praises in this place for the next 10 seconds. Come on. Reba babosa. Shaka rebe se terababa. Come on, I need somebody to shout, breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. Every Jericho wall will come crumbling down, will fall down on its face, will fall flat in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody, once again, the Bible says in Joshua chapter 6, verse 20, that it fell down flat. It became nothing. It became so leveled. My goodness. I need you to hear me. It became so flat and so leveled that they did not even need to walk on a stone. It became so flat, so level. God is making things smooth for you. God is making a way for you. You will not trip. You will not fall. You will not stumble. You will not skip. You will not jump. You will not leap. God is making a smooth way for you. It's called a red carpet deal. Are you ready for Jesus to roll out the red carpet? Are you ready for Jesus? Come on, somebody. Lights, camera, action. You better get your high heels. You better get your Sunday best. Are you ready for lights, camera, action for the red carpet treatment, the red carpet to unravel, to roll out before you? My goodness, it's going to be a piece of cake. My goodness, it's going to be a patty cake. My goodness, it's going to be like a walk in the park. Do you know why? Because I'm walking with the Lord because I'm walking in his prophetic instruction in the rhema word of God. I didn't need to strive. I didn't need to conjure up a strategy, a plan from the past of my flesh. I didn't need to exert or exude my strength and my gifts, but because I'm obeying the prophetic word of God and I'm under his strategic prophetic anointing. Therefore, God says, walk around seven, seven times. He says, walk around and on the seven day, I released seven shout. I released a shout. And it was loosed. And the frequency, the sound, the shout. Come on, somebody. That became the roar of heaven. That became the victory shout of God from heaven to earth. On earth as a that released 
that sonar sonic frequency. That sonic frequency blast breakthrough. Rebebe. Come on, I need you to praise God. I feel breakthrough in this place. Listen, you got to start moving around right now. You got to get up. You got to rabaka. You got to pray out loud in your spiritual language. I feel the fire of God. I feel the faith of heaven. Oh, because faith without works is dead. Rababa. This is time for every wall to be leveled. Every wall to come crumbling down. God is making a way. Harabata. Every wall of resistance. Every wall of opposition, attack, and delay. It's coming down. In the name of Hikarabasa Matarebe. The Bible says that the gates will become yours. The gates of your enemies are yours, says God. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, my enemy's gates is mine. My enemy's gates is mine. Come on, somebody. I need you to give the Lord a mighty shout of praise. It was at that place. It was at that place of Jericho where the walls fell. And I'm telling you, God is going to give you prophetic, strategic intel to open up a way for you, to open up doors for you. Someone say amen. To open up doors and ways and avenues for you to enter in. And you know what the Bible here says? Come on, somebody. Someone say, preach Dr. Ben. The Bible here says that they charged straight into the city. They advanced, they charged straight into the city. My goodness, <clears throat> are you ready for your shout of victory? Uh-uh, your enemy cannot hold you down. The devil cannot hold you down. The devil cannot shut you up. The devil, and even today, amen. We won a legislative victory in the Senate, where transgender men are not allowed to compete in women's sports. Today, there was a tremendous victory in the courts of heaven and in the courts of the United States, where transgender men cannot compete with women identified gender female biological female in games, in athletic games. So someone shout, amen. Victory is coming. You shall no longer be silent. You are quiet for a time and a time and a half. But you shall not be silent, be quenched, be quiet any longer. The enemy is going to have to pay. The devil will have to pay. The enemy is going to have to pay back recompense. Rebebe, double for your trouble. Someone say double, double for your trouble. Somebody say hallelujah. The enemy is about to fall in terror and will become nothing, will collapse and will disappear and will dissipate and will become nothing, absolutely nothing by the power of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. I need you to praise God and I need you to praise the name of the Lord, wherever you're watching from. Just get in that glory. Let that glory river. Let it raise you up. Come on, Jesus is here in this place. Hallelujah. Jesus is here in this place. Come on, just agree with the man of God in this moment. Just agree haha, with the word of the Lord in this moment right now. Jesus. Your enemies will become your food. Your enemies will become your portion. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. These walls will come crumbling down, my friends. These walls. And once again, the walls can stand for opposition. Delay. Twelve feet tall, five feet wide. How thick is that layer of witchcraft? Now, how, how thick is that layer of warfare? How thick and nasty and conniving and deceiving is the slime of the enemy? The Lord is about to remove every single barrier and barricade in your life. And yesterday, 
was the day where the Jericho walls came crumbling down and it became nothing. What opposition are you facing? What difficulty are you facing right now? What wall of Jericho is staring you down right now? On the seventh day, seven priests, seven shofars, seven times marching around, and then unified, synchronized with one sound, with the rest of the, a shofar blast of breakthrough was released. Get ready for shouts of victory. Get ready for shouts of vindication. Shouts of vengeance. God's going to speak on your behalf. The Lord is going to shout and roar on your behalf. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now I want you to lift up your hands right now. Thank you Lord. Zebarabata. As you have your hands lifted up right now in the name of Jesus, I want you to just talk to the Lord. I want you to talk to Jesus. Because right now, I could feel angels coming down. Angels are being released to you. And the Spirit of God is coming upon you. Rabbi, and I declare a new song is going to come out of your mouth. Remember, new songs prophesy about a new season. And why are new songs unctioned prophetically by the Spirit? Why are new songs important? Because a new song declares of a new season. And you are in a new season. So get ready for a new sound, a new song, a new word, a new fire. New, 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 nuevo todo, todo es nuevo. Everything will be made new. That's what the Bible says. Behold, I make all things new. Somebody say hallelujah. Friends, I want you to lift up your hands right now because every wall is going to come crumb. The opposition, the witchcraft, the warfare, the delay, the strongholds. I'm telling you, some of you, the Lord is revealing to me right now. Some of you have been experiencing some backstabbings and betrayal where a Jezebel spirit has been trying to connive and conjure up things against you. So some of you, I see literally like a group of people bullying you, a group of people trying to bully you and conniving you into a corner like Elijah and Jezebel. But the Lord says, every enemy will scatter. And every person who speaks against you, a man, a woman, a God, will become nothing. So we're in a season where the walls are falling and his people are going to advance. Are you ready for exposure, for revelation? As the walls fall, the blinders will fall. The spirit of the blindness of the age, deception, will lift and fall. Cha! And the Lord will release vision and exposure it's going to be clear as day it's going to be clear as crystal it's going to be so clear that it's going to be as obvious as it always has been amen so lord i thank you right now that every witchcraft spirit cha, spirit of confusion i want you to lift up your hands right now and if you can i want you to put your hand on the screen lord i command Every spirit of witchcraft, divination, python, manipulation, confusion, fear. I bind it now and I break the stronghold off of their minds, off of their hearts. Break in Jesus' name. Break in Jesus' name. Cha! Rusata! Show! I release the hosts of heaven right now. That's right. Receive. Receive. Receive, receive, Shh. receive in the mighty name of Jesus. Bang, 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 bang. Some of you are shaking. Some of you, you feel like something left you. You feel lighter. Some of you, you're, you're, yeah, you're feeling something on your body. 
Korabosata. But I want you to comment below if because I can literally see things breaking off of you. So I want you to comment below if you are experiencing something and something has shifted. Amen. Right now, Jesus, Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus over this broadcast and over every single person who watches this prophetic breakthrough broadcast. Come Holy Spirit, every wall come crumbling down. Every wall will become flat in your life in Jesus' mighty name. Get ready to advance, to charge and to go straight into the city. Somebody say, I'm moving forward. You're moving forward. Listen, some of you, some of you felt tied up and confused. You felt like you were in a limbo. Should I stay? Should I go? Should I do this? Should I? But God is giving you the release. And he's saying, move forward. Be free. And go free. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Receive that same amen. Thank you, Lord. Every Jericho wall. And what wall have you been facing? I'm telling you, listen, I need you to hear this. Because there's walls that the enemy has put up around the government. But these walls are going to fall. And there's going to be exposure and revelation. And the enemy is going to be exposed. He cannot hide. The devil cannot hide. Darkness cannot run. So these deeds of darkness are going to be exposed. Amen. I said amen. And God's going to deal with it with a shout. A victory. Say it with me. I will no longer be silenced. You will no longer be silenced. You will no longer be intimidated. You will no longer be victimized. You will no longer be the victim. You will no longer be taken advantage of. You will no longer be played with. Be lied to. You will no longer tolerate toxicity and narcissism. You will no longer tolerate false prophets, wolves in sheep's clothing in your life. No longer. Someone say amen. No longer. No longer. Se karabatata. No longer. We will no longer tolerate the ways of Jezebel ever again in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Mountains are being moved. And remember, the greater the wall, the greater the praise. And hear me now. I'm going to end with this. Hear me now, friends. If you're with me today, say amen. Give us some hearts and likes. Share this on your wall. What looked like a delay was a procuring a peculiar procuring what it was a build up for the breakthrough. I'm going to say that again. What looked like a delay was a build up for the breakthrough. They had to be quiet for six days. Are you kidding me? God, do you not see the injustice? God, do you not see what's going on? Why don't you answer me, Lord? Oh, why are you quiet? Jesus, help me. What looked like a delay was a buildup for the greatest breakthrough of their lives. What looked like a breakthrough, excuse me, what looked like a delay became a great breakthrough for our lives. What looked like was a delay became a great breakthrough for our lives. Six days of delay turn into great 
breakthrough, a shout of vengeance, a shout, a sound of victory. Six days. How long have you been awaiting? How long have you, God, it's the fifth day. When is it going to happen? What do you want me to do now? It's day four. It's day five. On day seven. The perfect strategy of God came into alignment. <laughs> and now is the time. Now is the time. I declare unto you, now is the day of the seventh day of breakthrough. Today is the day. Today is the seventh day of breakthrough. Today is the day. I declare over you now. In Jesus' name. Come on, someone say, I am now in day seven. I am now on the seventh day anointing. Remember, it was the seventh day where God rested. It was the seventh day. The seventh day where God rested. And he said, it is very, very good. Are you ready for the very, very good anointing? Come on, somebody. God has something perfect for you. God has something so super catastrophic, expedient, aladocious. God has something so exact, specific, perfecto. God has something so perfect for you. He has something so perfect. He does not miss a mark. He does not miss a detail. He does not miss a thing. Today is the seventh day. This is the perfect time. This is the seventh day anointing. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm telling you, <laughs> I could slap something right now in Jesus' name. Jesus. Rabba Karabra. If you're with me today, I want you to shout amen. I want you to clap your hands and praise God for the seventh day anointing that we are in right now. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ his son and now let the weak say i am strong let the poor say i am rich because of what the lord has done for us and now let the weak say i am strong and let the poor say i am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm at a loss for words. I stand, I stand in awe of you. <laughs> I stand, I stand in awe of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due. I stand in awe of you and I stand I stand in awe of you I stand I stand in awe of you holy God to whom all praise is due I stand in awe of you I stand are you ready 
Are you ready to be in awe of Jesus? To be in awe of the Lord? Are you ready? <laughs> Thank you, Grace. You love you. I'm so in the glory right now. Your silence does not mean it's weakness. And what seems to be a delay has been a buildup for the greatest breakthrough of your life. If you believe it, say amen. If you believe it, say hallelujah. Sometimes, hear me now, and I'm flowing and I'm gonna close, but stay with me. Sometimes, because it always gets better at the, because he always saves the best for last. Amen. But sometimes, oh, I lost my train of thought. Okay, sometimes God doesn't open a door for you. Do you know what he does? He tears down walls for you. He doesn't open a door, but he tears down walls. That's what he does. He says, okay, if a door's not going to open here, then I'm going to just break it all down. <laughs> I'm going to bring it all down. If the, if, okay, if a door's not going to open, I'm just going to tear it all down. Just destroy the whole thing. <laughs> God, dang it. Just tear it all down. Doggone it, doggone it. Amen. Bless you, friends. Let me know if this blessed you today. Give us some hearts and likes. Share this on your wall. You will no longer be muzzled. Get ready for a shout of victory. I was very blessed to see you all. Very blessed to see the woman of God, Dr. Jolyn Whitaker, our great friend. And uh, pray for me. I'm going to be ministering. <laughs> oh my goodness. I got to get ready. I'm going to be ministering in about two hours. And... Uh, five services in the next three days. So I love you all, bless you. And remember next week, we have a conference in Orange County, California. Open heavens, power and glory. Can somebody get the Eventbrite link please? Next week, open heavens, power and glory in my home church and open heavens world, Orange County, California. Myself, evangelist John Ramirez and Jake Hamilton. It's gonna be powerful. Drive in, fly in, crawl in, do whatever you need to do to be a part of our incredible conference next weekend, April 27, 28, and 29. And as well, we still have VIP seats uh, available for you. And also, um, yeah, join us online. You have to register to join online. So can somebody get the link, please, before I get it? Myself. Amen. Someone say amen. Shika rabata rabata. Thank you, Lord. register <clears throat> next week myself 
Evangelist John Ramirez and Jake Hamilton. It's going to be mucho poderoso lo poderoso. So uh, register, join us online, join us in person, driving, flying, crawling, swimming, join online, whatever you got to do. It's going to be incredible. Amen. Well, friends, bless you. Love you. I'm here in Grand Junction, Colorado. So I will see you in the mighty name of Jesus. Give us a like. Give us a follow. Subscribe. Thanks for joining. God bless.